So the way we do that is we don't need to combine any of these or anything. But the way we do that is we go down here to commands and we hit unwrap. And there you go. There are all our UV shells and they are all appropriately sized. So they're all scaled relative to one another. This is where I would normally, I also make, I look to see if there's anything that didn't unwrap properly. It looks like everything did so A-OK. -okay. So now it's time to actually, well actually before I do anything, I want to show you what I was talking about earlier with adjusting these. So you can see right in there, the, uh, the UVs are not, or they're, they're overlapping, which is not good in our case. And the way you can change that is if we click on Mark Seams, you see that we can select entire UV islands and we can move them around. But in this case, I don't want to select the entire island, I just want to select one vertice. So if I go up here to the top and I select vertices, I can then select individual vertices in my UV preview window and I can move them so they're no longer overlapping. Now over here where I may want some uh, broader adjustments, oh, I can use my brush and then using what I have selected, I can make very gradual changes. Now blue in this case means that the UV is much, or that the face that a UV represents is much smaller than its 3D counterpart, whereas red means it's a lot bigger. So as we make a face larger, it becomes red, and if we make it smaller, it becomes blue. So that's what the colors here mean. So the more gray that a, uh, an island looks, the less distortion that is being applied to it. Now I might go into individual vertices and start tweaking these. Alright, we are getting very close to being done. Now what we have to do is we have to pack these UVs, meaning that we want to rotate, move, and scale them so that they take up as much space as possible within this square. The larger they are, the more pixels that we can fit onto them in our texture map, and the more detailed our object can become. So if every single one of these objects is very small, we would need a really big texture map in order to accommodate, in order to give it the amount of detail that our sculpting deserves. So I'm going to change my selection mode to islands. and I'm going to start moving them. Now what I typically like to do is if I just select all of them, and I think the easiest way to uh, do that is if I select one of them and I invert the selection and then shift select the one I had selected previously, I can grab all of them. And I'm just going to scale these up, because you can see we have a lot of empty space here that we can make use of. So I'm going to scale these up. Maybe I can scale it up even a little bit more. And now I will move these outside of the square and I will start trying to pack these into whatever space I can squeeze them into. So if I select any island, we get this gizmo. And the way I scaled it was by clicking and dragging on that middle square. Now to move it, I click on this circle. And to rotate it, I can click on these arcs on the outside. Now I'm going to leave this one as is, rotation-wise that is, and just move it very close to the edge. Now, this shell in particular does represent the bottom of our creature, which we're not going to be seeing as much, so we don't need to devote so much UV space to it, at least not as much as we might want to devote to the top of our model. 
or to the mouth, which is the most detailed area. So I might actually scale this down a little bit so that we can give priority to some of the other shells. Now I am tempted to split this up into two different UV sets. That is to say that certain polygons will draw from one UV map or from one texture and other polygons will draw from another texture. Like I may put the proboscis, the gel sacs, the fins, and the teeth onto one texture map and put the main body onto a separate texture map. I do this with some of the other creatures in the game I'm working on, but those creatures are much larger than this and a lot more detailed. However, just to show you how that would work, if I selected one of the shells, like this one, and I go up here to default, these are the UV sets. So if I add a new UV set, and I call this one, let's just say, extremities, then I can move the selected UV shell to that UV set, and it'll disappear. It'll also almost disappear from our model. That just means it's on a different UV set, and if I change the UV set I am currently previewing to extremities, then you see there's my UV shell. So that's how you can get some you can get multiple objects, or you can get an increased amount of uh, texture detail without having to make a extra large, like a 4K texture map. Instead, you could have two 2K texture maps. Now, I may go into that a bit more detail in some other tutorial, but I can't do it for this one because this creature is small enough and simple enough that I think that making two separate texture maps for it would be a little overkill. So. I'm going to move those back, move that back to default, Go and then up here I will delete unused UV sets. So now it's gone. Anyway, let me scale that back down because it isn't as important, and then I will move the rest of these into position. So this is the tail. When you're packing these, it's important that you try to fit the large UV shells into the square first before you start trying to move in the smaller shells. Once you fit in the larger shells, you can squeeze the smaller shells into any sort of in-between space, or any space in between your larger shells, because the larger shells are predominantly going to determine the organization of your UV packing. So I'll start with all my large shells, try and get those packed as efficiently as possible. Yep, it's very close, but that'll work for us. And then if I want to rotate this exactly 180 degrees, I can use these rotate clockwise and counterclockwise buttons. That's more appropriate for when you're doing hard surface modeling and you really need your UVs to be aligned very neatly. In this case, with an organic model, it's not as important, but still worth knowing. All right, so these are all our bone shells. Whoa. To deselect something, you can just control click on it. Now you could leave the UVs as they were packed by the, uh, the UV packing algorithm inside of 3D Coat, and that would work, that is functional. You don't have to go through this part. But if you want to go the extra mile and really make sure that your texture maps are as optimized as they can be, then you want to put in this kind of time. 